Starting the business was really quite interesting in that it was a startup 50 years ago. After a trip to Boston, uh, I was just visually struck when I was there seeing these gorgeous plants well designed and cared for in office buildings and it was just holy cow we need we need to do that and I came back to St. Louis and my husband had a retail store and I suggested to him you know we need we need to sell plants in the store and he goes why and my answer was because people will buy them. And I thought that was really a wonderful thing to be able to sell things that people really wanted. It was an interesting time to do startup, not only startup for a new business, but in a brand new industry. My style as a business leader is to assume I may not be the brightest bulb in the pack and that I need to recall and do my best to hire smart people and then give them the chance to perform, listen to them and let them make mistakes because we all, how do we learn? We learn from making mistakes, especially if you're out there trying to do something that hasn't been done before, there are a lot of mistakes and the best you can do is learn from them. Uh, I also believed in sharing information. I didn't think people really could do their jobs if they didn't have good information to start with. And I also believe very much in not reinventing the wheel. So as we went along over the years, if as a team we ran into an issue, uh, which we did not have an answer for, at that point we could reach out really almost across the country because we had established relationships and ask, has anybody dealt with this? Have you faced it? How did you, what was the solution that you used? And uh, that seemed to work very well for us. And to this day, we do it. We're, we're highly involved, and uh, so everybody here now will do the same thing, no matter what department they're in. They will reach out to colleagues around the country if they have issues or solutions that they're looking for. I attended university in uh, Long Island. And uh, really back then, I think most of my education was outside the classroom. What I learned first in school was how to get involved in community and what the meaning of community was. And uh, when I came to St. Louis, I was shown what community was. I don't know if you know about Laclede Town, but I moved into Laclede Town with nothing. And before I went to sleep that night, the community had basically taken care of me with the concept of pass it forward when you're done with it. So from there, whether it was volunteerism uh, within city organizations, because I am completely devoted to the city of St. Louis, even though our business is metropolitan wide, I'm a city person and I have, I have worked on boards, uh, community boards, neighborhood associations, taken leadership roles, worked behind the scenes in politics, and done as much as I could to create community in St. Louis. And I, and I just really love, love doing it because I think it's a great city. I then also love politics. What can I say? behind the scenes, knocking on doors. Not afraid, I'd go out knock on doors all the time. Entirely personal, uh, I uh, did Zumba for about 10 years and just love it. I would say the success of the business uh, really is the people 
that work here. I know often success is clearly defined in terms of dollars, but I view the development of people as being at least equally important. So I'd say that our biggest asset, our biggest success is our people. Fifty years for growing green ball, I can tell you I'm not going to be here. Well, this whole world of biophilic design has created enormous opportunity. And I'm not sure anyone in our entire industry knows exactly where that's going. Working with architects and designers continually, showing them the new things in the new designs, the new trends, about how to bring people and nature together. It's, it's a constantly changing world. So I, I think we're gonna go a long way with the concept of biophilic design. Can I tell you what the definition of that is right now? No, who knows? Our, you know, growing green could be here. It could be a whole other generation or two of people that started here in Growing Green that will be bringing it forward then. I was uh, really never afraid, and I love to talk to people. I, th I would say there were a few times I felt dismissed and uh, but I really didn't shy away. I would just keep going back uh, until I was heard. And uh, yet in my industry, I had, uh, as it developed, I became a leader in the industry. And I just found that th there were no boundaries. It was really interesting. I'd say in the general business world, surely, there were, there were boundaries that had to be crossed. But in our industry, even today, it's a, a great mix of ownership between men and women and partners. So it's, uh, it's, it's a mixture. We had a company here in St. Louis that was A.G. Edwards, family owned business and it was huge. And they uh, built a new building at Jefferson and Market. And they connected two buildings with this, it was a five or six story atrium. And the, they wanted big trees in there. So we were brought in after it was constructed. And the only way to get the trees in was to remove part of the glass wall that was the atrium. And it was five stories of glass wall. And we had to have the, the trees, and we're talking, I don't know, seven, 800 pound trees, 20 feet tall, lifted, hoisted through the glass, the opening in the wall with glass on both sides. And I was down below and our team was inside up above and the trees were spinning. And I had a glimpse of knocking out the other remaining glass in the window. We did not, it was very successful and they were a client for years and years and years. My other favorite is when the jewel box in Forest Park was renovated. We were chosen as the contractor to do the renovation and it was, it, it was a miracle of how it was designed. Uh, local landscape architect, Ted Spade, uh, did the project. We worked so successfully with both the city and other trades on the job, enormous cooperation, and it just came out perfectly, you know, just as everybody had envisioned it would. And then we took care of it for 10 years. And that truly was one of my favorite projects.